Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Crusader Kings 3 and I've also been having a bit of issues trying to get back to this game but here I am and we're going to be continuing our island let's play series so let's play we can't declare war on anybody so we're gonna to have to wait for a while we can declare war on him but what is why there is no causes belly for us ah greetings nephew despite our best efforts my agents have yet to uncover any secrets at our Ragnarville's court. I do not believe we will find anything either. There is less going on here than a graveyard at noon. Signed. I can't pronounce it. I'll just say it. Bebnin Nick Brian Bran. I do apologize. Okay. Yes. Okay, but the Sunset Invasion guys, they haven't come yet, so I don't know. Uh, ah, an earl to scare, a local mystic with dubious morals, and a fabricated omen. Perfect. Before the mystic leaves for Earl Diomed's court, there is but one question. Will my false omen be one of fortune or doom? So has a 10% chance of regressing each month. Okay, a bad omen for a bad of Earl. Let's do a good omen. You've done, but you are 80 years old now. So I want you. You demand a powerful position, but what do I give you? And as for you, but you want a power pos position, but what do I want to give you? Were I to assign you this one? Okay, many treatises, many treaties have been written on honorable conduct in war, but those authors' lives weren't on the line when they put pen to paper. That's very true. I know from experience the best way to defeat my enemies is to ensure we only engage in battle on my terms. The question is what terms will be most advantageous? Well, let's do this one. Brilliant. I can declare war, but I'm not sure. As for court intrigue, I want you to manage my domain for a bit. Factions, intrigue, let's go for council. I wish you to go on a pilgrimage and prepare for the journey. So while our king is going all the way up in order for his pilgrimage, we'll have to wait and see what will happen. Pilgrimage, a rude story. Passing by the campfire, one of my fellow travellers is telling a story. She once heard about some petty king to raise to raucous laughter. They all fall silent when I approach, except for the storyteller. Ah, don't worry, my lord, you're nothing like the knave in the story. It's about the petty king of some far away place called Munster. Really now? Tell me more of this petty king. Let's increase the game speed a little bit faster. Of course, we have to make sure that our kingdom isn't so much of a, you know, it's run peacefully. Pilgrimage. Love thy neighbor. Along my fellow pilgrims, there is a woman who preaches compassion and fellowship until she reaches the topic of heathens. One evening around the campfire, she loudly declares them to be abominable monsters in the eyes of gods, deviants and ch child murderers all. Most people avert their eyes when she looks at them. Tonight, I was not quick enough. 
Do you not agree, O oh Petty King? They are not all that bad. I am finally here, body and soul at the great church of Jerusalem. As the bishop offers me blessings, I reflect on everything that had to happen for God to bring me here at this moment in time. As I make all the preparations necessary for the earth's departure from this world, I am interrupted by a page. The knave went dead and without any help from me. He died of old age. Well, I do want... I have undergone the journey of a holy man, and they insist it has changed something about me, whether I can see it myself or not. We can build some, some of this. It'll take me 19 months, 19 months. Let's construct some walls and towers. Which is going to take a while anyway. So. He's my nephew. Huh. It was sort of steam. I do not have a causes belly. Causes belly, whatever his name is. Huh. I can't declare war then. So well that sucks. Oh come on. A disrespectful marshal. Why? What did I do to him? I'm gonna sway you again. To make my brother Lorcan more susceptible to my attempts at approaching him, I can include a compliment in my next missive to his court. I will be sure to mention his clear rationality. Greetings, brother. Our recent correspondence has been a source of joy for me. I cannot help but think that we might benefit from increased communication. Signed, Lord Lorcan. I'll recruit you. Let's look at our intrigue, our factions, our decisions. Mm, what's our false conversion? We we'll wait for this. Ah, as my scheme moves closer to fruition, swift communication is key. I have an especially clever pigeon which Gilla Patrick produces send an urgent message to me in Luminuk if the need arises. But how would I get the bird into the castle of Gabran? Do forgive me if I butcher the names. I do not mean to do that. See. Let's do it. Okay, let's go for a hunt, shall we? Sound the horn. You would think it a creature from myth. Perhaps a god disguised in animal form. It was the largest stag I have ever seen. Even after the beast was wounded, the chase lasted half a day. It is still an imposing sight, lying dead before me. Let's have a beautiful trophy. Let's send to the Pope, shall we? The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave the wetlands behind as the servants prepare the stag. Another game for the journey back. In spite of our difficulties, I must say that the hunt went very well. Send you a marriage. Aha, uh -huh, so you've accepted our marriage proposal. Alright, that's very good.
I wish to arrange a marriage to what? Yes, that's no, I don't think you're, you're a good one. Are these all the same women? Well, I want to arrange you in a marriage to this lady. Good, so we sent it. Aha, greetings, my liege. I accept your marriage proposal. Your courtier, Tog, and my acquaintance, Dab Essa, will be joined in holy matrimony. May good God grant them a long life and many children. When the time comes, my agents will need a safe escape route out of Earl Don Domnall's castle, should anything go wrong. A detailed map of the local plains with all its hidden parts and caves would be an invaluable resource. We'll exploit ourselves. Okay, plush, vibrant and soft as the first light of dawn. A merchant presents me with an with an exquisite carpet in hopes of future good relations. As I marvel at the fine weave, I am struck by a thought. Wouldn't a carpet like this muffle the treading of feet? He even conceal the bumbling agent? Let's do it. I want to serve the crown. I want to unlock it. Okay, so there's cu cu culture. All right, culture. Every character in county belongs to a culture. Cultures represent many things. They're linguistic boundaries. No, otherwise they are a shared heritage group or a broad geographical grouping. The characters who share a culture also have a slightly increased one opinion of another. Irish, for example, belongs to the Goidelic culture group, which contains the cultures most related to Irish without being Irish. These characters would like you a little better too. Culture determines which innovations you have access to. Let's look at our culture. Okay, so these are all the Irish innovations. We haven't reached the high medieval era yet, so not yet. Let's wait and see. And innovations are the various, you know, technologies that you can adapt, etc. Although the concept of, say, coinage is easy to grasp, it takes time for people to completely adopt the use of currency instead of bartering. Innovations provide access to new bonuses, buildings, and minute arms for all members of a culture. An innovation can progress faster by being the culture's fascination. Fascination is set by the cultural head, the most powerful ruler of that culture. And if you are the cultural head, you can change fascination in the, in the culture view. Ah, my spy master, Bebin, approaches me with a wicked grin. My lord, this pouch contains a powder most nefarious. It was sprinkled on top of something, say a gift for Earl Donma. It leaves no trace but will afflict whoever touches it with weakness and ill humours. Well... Duke Paul of the Northern Isles has announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to Catholicism, having become disillusioned with the teachings of the Catholic priests. The nobles of the Northern Isles no longer consider the clergy to be righteous and true. As Cathars, they believe their new faith properly aligns with the will of God, and they are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. What twisted mockery of our faith is this? <clears throat> it's 
Seems everybody's converting to Catholicism. But I would not worry yet. As for you, I want you to be the commander. Back. Let's... No. Knowing how soldiers act around each other and noticing how freely information and rumor flows, I am struck by an idea. If some of my soldiers were to infiltrate the Earl's army, they might offer a different insight into his plans. Let's do it. How long will it take us? It'll take us some time. As I make all the preparations... Ah, so he died. Well, at this point... I want to declare war. Why can't I declare war on him? Seems I'm... Yes, yes. To make my Marshal Earl Ragnarvald more susceptible, susceptible to my attempts at approaching him, I can include a compliment in here. I will give you a sort of presence. Indeed. Our recent correspondence has left much to desire. Please refrain from personal marks in the future. Hmm. It was meant to punish you, fool. Ah yes, the Pope has given us more. Increase opinion with you. Aha. As my schemes move closer to fruition, swift communication is key. I okay, I've done this one. I've done this one before. Rally the troops. Oh my. So who's declaring war? Aha, brilliant. We'll win this, we'll win this battle. Yes. Yes, we'll win this battle. We'll win it. Yes, yes. Night falls and I quickly asleep. That's odd. As I rest in my bed. In my dreams I see a great light. An impenetrable heavenly light. I know not what it is. Or even what represents. But something about it brings me peace and happiness. Is it a sign from the heavens? Wait, where are you going? Oh, no you don't. Oh, no you don't. You don't want to besiege us, wait. Stop it, let me just move my army, damn it. Yes, we're winning. We're winning the battle indeed. We're winning. Ah, 
I can't pronounce the name, but I'll just call him Mert. Uh, Lord Tack is in his cups on a daily basis. Even though it has happened and opened up some opportunities to learn about Earl Donchad, he is of little use for anything else. Have another drink. I am sitting around the map table with Earl Ragnarvold and Mayor Dolgas, discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Ragnarvold eagerly points out all of the prime targets. We should immediately send raiding parties to pillage, while Dolgas sits back and patiently advocates for us to secure critical locations and wait for the enemy to come to us instead. It is my right to decide the ultimate course of action. I will see both. I know where you are. The very heartlands of Western Christianity are under siege by the infidels. Desperate Christian lords have persuaded this holiness. The Pope Alexander to declare his intention of forging a righteous alliance to expel the heathens in the name of St. George. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I am asleep. I wander in the void before my mind is pulled into a dream. Deep in my subconsciousness, subconsciousness, I know this as a vision of the future. Though my consciousness doesn't register it as such, there is a fork at the road, at least. I think it is a road, and I think it is a fork at a road that goes into two directions. Left. I see an idyllic landscape as far as the horizon stretches. The sky is bright, the sun is warm, the birds are singing. In this world, my dynasty and realm prosper. Pebble Envoy has reached my court, bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Alexander issued a call to, all, to arms, to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic petty king, I am expected to prepare my men in support of this most holy cause, sponsored by the Universal Church itself, to all those who will take the fight against the wild infidels desecrating the holy grounds of Jerusalem. The Holy See promises full absolution from all sins and a guaranteed place in heaven. I will be ready to join. Okay, so the attackers really don't have that much. Yeah, we can hold them back. I want to increase opinion. Aha! It was no longer valid to continue. The time has come. My agents are in place. One of them will pay the assassin the very night the deed will happen. Another will ensure the wall is unguarded. A third will leave a subtle trail of candles to Earl Doncha's bedchamber. Do it! He escaped unharmed. He has actually made it inside the castle, but not he did not reach his chamber. He was captured and under pain of death. He was actually dared to scare off the real assassin and succeeded. I would, 